everybody. We got a great one today, you know, for a change. Mark Leibovich, who writes for the Atlantic Monthly, joins me for the first time since I had him on for the launch of his number one New York Times bestseller. Thank you for your servitude, which is about how virtually every Republican office holder fell in line behind Donald Trump after he won in 2016. Even those who had been viciously critical of him completely caved. Your Ted Cruz's, your Lindsey Graham's, all of them except Jeff Flake. He's now gone. Bob Corker, he left the Senate. Thank you for your servitude was about how the entire Republican Party just fell in line behind this sick, sick guy, even though they knew he was a sick, sick monster. And now they all know he's guilty of the charges brought by the special counsel. If you read the 49-page indictment, it's all there. Hiding highly classified documents, lying to his lawyers, lying to the government, showing classified documents to friends while saying, I shouldn't be showing this to you. I could have declassified this when I was president, but I didn't, and I can't now. Well, wait a minute. He he has said he could declassify anything just by th- thinking it. Now, if that's the case, that he could just classify secret documents just by uh, thinking about it when he was president, do you really believe he's looking at this document and thinking, hmm, did I think about declassifying this one or not? Because if I didn't, I better not show it to him even though I am showing it to him, but at least I'm saying I shouldn't be showing it to him. It's it's just hard for pathological liars to keep things straight, which is why you shouldn't be a pathological liar, kids. The classified documents Trump stored in his, his boxes included information regarding defense and weapons capabilities, the Unauthorized exposure of these documents could put at risk the national security of the United States, foreign relations, and plans for possible retaliation in response to a foreign attack. In the indictment, there are descriptions of the kinds of classified documents that he was keeping illegally and the danger they pose. These included documents classified as top secret. And it says, disclosure of which could be expected to cause exceptionally grave damage to national security. Then merely secret documents, the unauthorized disclosure of which could, quote, be expected to cause serious damage to uh, national security. As opposed to the exceptionally grave damage to national security posed by the top secret documents. This is information related to intelligence sources, methods, and analytic processes. That kind of information can put our intelligence sources at risk for their lives. Now, why did Trump do this? Why did he insist on taking this stuff, keeping it, lying about it? Hmm. Could it be money? Hmm. Who might want information about, like, oh, Iran's nuclear program, the Saudis? I mean, six months after Trump left office, Jared Kushner's investment fund secured $2 billion from the Saudis. Now, no proof of that in the indictment. Not not yet, anyway. But there's so much here. Him lying to counsel his staffer, Nauta, who's been indicted now for lying to the feds, moving shit around and hiding it in bathrooms next to toilets, all those documents on the stage. A friend of mine, Pat Prof, said they are doing uh, improv night at Mar-a-Lago, shows at 8, 10, and 12, where the improvers, uh, they take a secret document and then they, they do an improv based on that. Anyway... Uh, this is a uh, slam dunk, but, 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 uh, how long will this take? Smith wanted this tried in South Florida, where most of the crimes uh, took place. Uh, he, he could have asked for D.C., but he didn't want to be accused of venue shopping, where 95% of the jury pool voted for Biden. So in South Florida, uh, that's where it is, where most 
of these crimes uh, took place. And then they draw Judge Aileen Cannon. Now, she's the awful Trump appointee who slowed things down in the first place by assigning a special master to view the documents. And that was reversed by the very conservative Trump circuit court who said she acted improperly. But now she's got the case. And this is disconcerting, to say the least. She could delay the trial until after the election. She could play uh, a biased role in jury selection. So um, there's that to worry about. But the reason I asked Mark Leibovich to join me is because thank you for your servitude is about how these Republicans all caved. And will they do it again? You've been seeing that despite the damning evidence, the Republicans are all going after Smith and Garland and Biden and my question to Mark is, will this make a difference in who the Republican nominee is? Trump's raising money on it. DeSantis went after Smith and Garland. So did Pence. Now, I think Christie's going to try a role similar to the role he played in bringing down Rubio in 16. But Rubio was like third at the time, at best. I don't think Christie brings down Trump, but it will be fun to see him try. I want to get Mark's thoughts on on all of this, and so will you. We taped it Friday. I was going to run a really great conversation with Frank Four, also of The Atlantic, on the war on Ukraine. We we taped that Wednesday. We'll do that next week. You know, uh, sometimes I say that uh, this podcast is like the daily without the resources of The New York Times. Um but there's really just me and Peter. That's that's it, right, Peter? That's it. It's just you and me. Yeah. And your son graduated from high school today. He did. So uh, we do this monologue and some edits on the fly uh, to get this out at midnight tonight, as usual. Uh, so uh, my listeners can hopefully enjoy it. Thanks, Peter. What, what, how big was the class? Only about 75 or 80 kids in the class. And what you told me is the kids all like each other. They all like each other. They're very close. It was a really very sweet ceremony, graduation. I cried the whole time. You did? (laughs) I did. I cried a lot. I'm an easy crier. Yeah. Yeah, me too. But somehow we do this uh, week after week, my friend. So next week we will have a very insightful report on the war in Ukraine. He was great. Wasn't Frank great? So good. So, so good. What a treat you'll have coming up next week. Yeah, and coming up now, this week's offering Mark Leibovich on the Mar-a-Lago documents, and it is a great one. You know, for a change. Mark, thank you for joining us. Uh, You are a lawyer. You know what? I don't know. I told the person when we were booking this that I am not a lawyer. I knew that. Yeah, yeah. But you um, know what? I, I've seen a lot of lawyers today. Yeah. And I needed someone who wasn't a lawyer <laughs> to discuss yeah. this. You know, I can sort of tell people, I can give you the layman's perspective. You're, uh, you're not a lawyer. Uh, you know, I, I'm not a lawyer, but I played one in a sketch. Not only that, you, uh, you played a member of the, the Senate Judiciary Committee, and you sat on the Senate Judiciary. Well, you played one on an SNL skit. Paul Simon of Illinois. And you sat and, and on sat the on the committee. committee. Yep. Yeah. So that's that qualifies you a lot more than most people who have actually been to law school. We we're both happy about uh, these indictments, right? I mean, we we it's a shame, but didn't you know these were happening? I mean, anybody who's been following this was going like, "What the hell?" Because it's been clear if you've been paying any attention, yeah, uh, that he has he <laughs> uh, took these things uh, and uh, when. Uh, DOJ asked for the documents. They sent him just some of them and said they had sent them all. And uh, then he evidently uh, lied to some of his lawyers, it seems, that might be a part of the case. Is that uh, what you're saying? Yeah, here? It, look, it looks like he lied. He lied to his lawyers. Uh, he looks like he was reckless in not giving back any of a number of very sensitive documents. It turns out they were quite sensitive. Nuclear weapons talked Nuclear about. Nuclear weapons. Uh, yeah, I mean, like highest markings, highest levels and so forth. You know, it's funny, it, it's it's so dead to rights. I mean, there's photographic evidence of the boxes like stacked up next to a toilet. 
you know, in like public areas of Mar-a-Lago, anyone who comes visit Mar-a-Lago, if they want to, you know, before dinner, check out some classified documents. I mean, they could have. I mean, it's a bizarre thing. And, and it's like, it's not even close. Your some of your old colleagues, like uh, John Barrasso just said, he's, you know, he's the number three Republican oh. in the Senate. He just said, yeah, oh, this, yeah. this feels very political. I'm like, oh, it feels <laughs> political. Well, you are the kind of the expert on Republicans in the Senate and the House uh, caving to this guy. Yeah. Thank you for your servitude, I believe, was the last time I had you on. And mm -hmm. uh, the number one, number New one, York Times bestseller. Yep. It'll be interesting to see when and if that stops. I mean, when or pe will people break? And obviously, there's going to be people running against him for president. Yeah. Who will, uh, Christie, we kind of think. Yeah. Uh, Aza Hutchison. Yeah. But that could be it. Could be it. I mean, the thing about the two of them, I mean, that's sort of their shtick, too. I mean, you know, they might even be sincere. I mean, Christie sort of tried it all ways now. But you would think that Pence would uh, throw caution to the wind here and maybe tell the truth about how bad this is. I mean, you'd think that he would He have, didn't today. Today, you know, he, he didn't took today. a complete He's, party line. Yeah, totally. And, you know, and, and DeSantis, who, um, you know, probably has the most to gain because, you know, he seems to be in the number two slot. I mean, it's not that hard rhetorically or even just explicitly to say, boy, this is bad. <laughs> this is really bad. And let me tell you why it's bad. But here's the thing. Let's start with this almost baseline. About 90% okay. of Republicans are either MAGA or at least sympathetic to MAGA, I think. Yep. I mean, the, of Republicans who haven't left the Republican Party, yeah. I don't know what uh, about independents, but that's who's going to be voting in the Republican primaries and yeah. show up at the caucuses. I think this, uh, for the moment, strengthens Trump. Now, the question is, and we have talked about the alternative universes of information. Sure. And no matter how rock solid this case is, no matter how much it involves nuclear weapons and showing stuff to people and lying about uh, what you've done with the documents and moving sure. them so, and the claim that you can declassify documents by mm -hmm. thinking it. Yeah. And then testimony where later or, or, or something he said that maybe suggests, no, you can't do that. That was pretty ridiculous. And Brasso, Brasso was asked by George Stephanopoulos, mm -hmm. can a president declassify top secret information by just thinking it? And yeah. Brasso said, well, I don't know the, the processes by which you declassify <laughs> information. And uh, Stephanopoulos said, that, that was a rhetorical question. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good, that's, that's good. Yeah. That was good. And Brasso said, no, you can't. You can't. You can't. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's why like, we're just sort of sitting here. I mean, there, there is like a I always have this fantasy as a, as a reporter wishing I could just ask the really simple question, one that you were actually very good at when you were on the committee, just of people like like when Barrasso says, you know, this feels political. I would like to say, Senator, as you were reading the charging document, uh, the, the charges, what, what was <laughs> describe the feeling to me? What was what felt political <laughs> as you were reading that? Uh, because you know, either he hasn't read it. I mean, he's lying, but he's he probably. I assume he's lying. Uh, I assume he probably hasn't read it. Well, it was the part that uh, where it said that some of these documents were about the times of lines of attacks. Was that yeah. the part that felt political, or did that feel like <laughs> unbelievably dangerous? <laughs> <laughs> you know, may, maybe two to our nation be security. Yeah, it, but it feels political. I can't explain it. It feels political. I mean, look, I, I was, you're, you're right. I mean, to say that uh, this sounds damning, again, we're dealing in the world of reality. So, oh, did, and it went to this, uh, what's her name? Aileen Cannon. Is it really going to go to her? Let's explain who she, she was. She was given the case originally in the documents and yeah. screwed it up very royally, right? And was overturned yeah. twice by the circuit court. Yep. Yeah, she was terrible. I mean, she um, she she was the one that like appointed the special master. Remember the special master? That was kind of a big deal. And he right. uh, they, they picked some guy in New York. I should know his name, but I forgot it. 
that he was very good. He was good, and like the Trump people were kind of into him, and they liked him. But boy, he he was not what they wanted. Yeah, he was totally messing with them. And I think a, uh, ultimately they eliminated the need for a special master, right? Yeah, and she again, she was overruled by the circuit court. Yeah, and she was overruled by very very Trump appointed judges. And she was a yeah, Trump and here she is judges. again. Here, here she is again, and there are a number of of mechanisms by which you know this could be objected to. You know, there was some. I mean, she was overruled so many times. There's so much stuff on the record from you know even people on the far right uh, about how ill-equipped she was. So you would think that there would be a, be enough at least reason to find maybe a, a new judge. The question is, was this random? I mean, in other right. words, I don't know how many. Uh, judges there are in that district right but if there were six or was it a random thing or is there three or whatever it was but boy yeah. oh boy i don't know how <laughs> i was very yeah. shocked to see aileen yeah. cannon but then you've got to object to her yeah takes time you know the prosecutors have to object to her and they lose that yeah man you got a mad judge you got a mad judge it, it's you would think that the the defense would if they had two judges in the world that they would like to hear this case, it would be her or Clarence Thomas. <laughs> well, uh, it could get to, to the Supreme Court. It could get to the Supreme Court, and he could sure. be the tiebreaker. Uh, yeah, if he's still sure. there. So, uh, what about this? Uh, strikes you in terms of politics? Is this uh, in the short term, and how short? Uh, good for for Trump? Uh, does this solidify his lead? Yeah. I mean, that seems to be the conventional wisdom, although I don't, I, I never fully bought it. I mean, I guess if you go by the first indictment, he did seem to gain some strength, you know, versus DeSantis. I mean, that coincided with DeSantis's very shaky debut into the campaign. I mean, he didn't exactly set the world on fire. DeSantis doesn't, uh, we, we were talking about this earlier. Yeah. He doesn't seem to like people. No, but really I've doesn't. made the observation to you, which mm -hmm. I, uh, is that there are a lot, of, a lot of politicians who don't like people, mm -hmm. but can pretend they do. And he doesn't seem to have that ability. He is a terrible actor at even pretending to like people. I saw him up close in New Hampshire last week. You know, his rap is that he's really not very good at campaigning, which I always think is a little overrated as a factor, just because, you know, most people experience politicians, even in small town presidential campaign venues, you know, through TV. But he was egregiously bad. He, he really didn't like people. Doesn't like people. He doesn't like woke either. Uh, no, no, no. No, he does not like and woke. And also, he just hasn't been, I mean, uh, how many jobs did he lose from Disney <laughs> by going after that? <laughs> well, did Florida yeah. lose? Yeah, there were there were tens of well, in that billion dollar project that 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 I guess is not going to happen, or at least they uh, decommitted to. I mean, that's some um, what thousands of employees, thousands of jobs, you know, and all kinds of economic development and by pissing pissing off by trying to be woke, right? Because yeah. uh, Disney wanted to don't say gay, right? They're opposed to don't say gay, and, yeah, uh, they didn't, they didn't and, like that, and it? and. and, and at the end of the day, Florida loses thousands of jobs. <laughs> yeah, yep, they, they do. Um, and many of them, by the way, I've been to Disneyland, some of them yeah. uh, for LGBT people. Yeah. Oh, a absolutely. No, I mean, it, it's it's comical. I mean, it's truly, truly comical. But um, it's also, you sort of wonder, I mean, is Disney kind of messing with him? I mean, were they, I mean, is this the kind of announcement they normally wouldn't make? I mean, do you actually make a decision like this based on the governor being a dick? I mean, I guess maybe. Well, he wasn't just being a dick. He was like suing them or doing doing stuff like, you know, we're going to put a car dump. We're going to put a prison <laughs> next to you. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, it you was like say that, right? Yeah. 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 It was something like that. So I think he he just makes it to Iowa and then drops out. I just there's a certain point. And 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 right now you would say this probably helps him more than anybody, because I think about 90 percent of people are still Republicans or MAGA. Yeah. And he's he's doubled down on MAGA. And yeah. obviously, I don't think Haley has. She has a little. She has a little. Yeah. And Scott doesn't feel as MAGA. He's kind. He kind of is, actually. 
Yeah, you know, you wrote mm-hmm. uh, wrote the book again. Thank you for your servitude about all these Republicans in uh, all these positions, especially in Congress, who just caved. Right. And right. they still are. I mean, even uh, and, and and even Pence today. Yeah, yeah. Basically, went after the prosecutors. <laughs> the guy who who almost was hanged because of him. Mm-hmm. Because of him. Yep. No, I mean, here. If I were writing another chapter of "Thank You for Your Servitude," uh, you're supposed to say that. I, I said the title right there. They tell you to do that. I don't. I never bought that though. It always felt awkward. But. No, you sh- you should say the title. Thank you. At number one, New York it Times. Was, it wasn't seller. number one. It, it stayed on the list for a while. Oh, it was a great book. It is a great great book, but it's also relevant. And if I were writing another chapter, I would do a whole thing on how the other the non Trump candidates um, are now just falling all over each other to say the most supportive, um, appa- you know, outraged thing uh, in defense of Donald Trump. I mean, you know, the immediate thing is, you know, DeSantis saying, oh, I, I would probably pardon him. You know, he said that after indictment one, um, you know, they're all upset about abuse. There was a thing. I mean, he's not a candidate, but uh, what's his name? Charlie Kirk, the right wing, uh, kind of like a troller. Um, he has immediately called for all the Republican candidates to drop out of the race, come to Florida and defend Donald Trump, which wouldn't that be hilarious if they all just did? It's like, all right, we're just, but here, here's the thing, Al. I mean, these, these, these new charges include words like conspiracy and, <laughs> um, uh, let's see, uh, not, not treason, but what, what is it? Well, there's nuclear weapons in them. Yep. New, it has nuclear in it. We have conspiracy. We have timelines of attack, timelines. I mean, like some really damn attention of things um, that he wanted. He wanted to do things with. Yeah. Crimes that require a willful mishandling of the material. Yeah, all those things. Um, but far worse, far worse than, uh, you know, tax, you know, the taxes or they, they did this or hush money payments to a porn actor i mean you know that stuff you can kind of not roll your eyes at because those are serious charges uh although i'm not a lawyer so i don't really know um (laughs) but uh yeah this is pretty damning but does it matter does it matter because at least to in the republican nomination process now i think it matters in the general i would hope okay today seems a lot more serious than new york was Mm -hmm. But what happens after this, one, if there's a conviction, but what Mm -hmm. happens after this if it's followed by Georgia Mm -hmm. and then followed by January 6th, which it sounds like Smith is is bearing down on that. Yeah. Do the the Republicans, these Republicans on the debate stage still stay with him or is it just Christie and Hutchinson who aren't? Oh, boy. I I mean, until I see otherwise, I I think it's just Christie and hutchinson maybe i mean you know and and i mean i do think i I had like i have a real sort of eye roll i mean i'm quite suspicious of christie's motives you know having watched him as we all did for the first term and like after he kind of ran to to trump's side in 2016 but uh, i have to say i was pretty impressed by his his announcement and you know he he was very crisp in his critique um i mean he, he just said you know this guy cannot be president and he was self-deprecating so I, I did think he was pretty effective i don't know if it'll get him on the debate stage i don't know if it'll get him to one percent because you know as you know it's not not where the party is but i i do i guess what i what i'm always curious about is you know i guess maybe it helps trump but are there actually people out there who say you know I, I was going to support Nikki Haley or I was going to support Tim Scott. But <laughs> then he got indicted, um, you know, in charges of conspiracy and 37, 38 charges. And I don't know, I, I, I'm giving him another look. I think he, I want him to be president. <laughs> I mean, does that does that thought process really exist? I mean, I get the sort of yeah. circling the wagons, you know, oh, boy, the, the you know, the, the Justice Department is coming after conservatives. But. I don't know. I, I, I don't I don't I don't understand. I, 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 I've never really seen someone sort of take me through the process by which they were maybe skeptical and ready to move on from Trump, but then decided to come back home after seeing this happen. 
Well, yeah, it, it happened after the first indictment in, in Manhattan. People would say, well, that was a reach, and that I, yeah. I've got to defend him. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Uh, and then on this one, I, again, I go to the alternative universe of information. Sure. And I, I haven't looked at Fox yet mm -hmm. um, in the next last day or so. But this is all lies, right? This is, sure. and then there's Hunter Biden. When they, uh, the, yep. uh, the case against Hunter Biden is much, much worse, yep. and against Biden himself. Yeah, yeah. And and what? Well, why didn't they uh, put Hillary? In oh yeah, that's right. There was nothing. There was nothing. Uh, I mean, there. basically um, nothing there. And also, the locker up uh, doesn't sound good now. <laughs> When, <laughs> I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty when, tough. when it has to do with classified material. <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's not like there's a there's a lack of side by side video evidence to sort of underscore the absurdity of these arguments. But I, I do think you know on the documents case, what Trump's defenders will say and have said is, oh well, you know, uh, Biden, you know, did this and uh, Pence, oh my did god, this, which is extremely. It, you know, disingenuous and, and inaccurate because, yeah, I mean, they ha had some and they turned it over immediately when the Justice Department or the archives asked for it. And there was no fuss whatsoever and no willful obstruction. If anything, it's the exact opposite. Yes. It's the it was there clearly accidentally, clearly. Yeah. Oh, I got it. Oh, we're alerting you. Oh, send the FBI over here. Oh, search every place I, you know, could possibly, be, you know, yeah. oh, it's gone. Yeah, yeah. And then Trump will go, oh, Obama has all these. Well, yeah, they're at his library <laughs> under <Right>. the auspices <laughs> yeah. of the National Archives. And right. yeah, they're at, you know, Biden's uh, a special storage thing for yeah. his papers Near his Camaro at, at the University of Delaware or something. Yeah. It doesn't matter how lame what right. he writes is because of this alternate universe. Right. And so, and that's uh, Fox and, and it's social media. Mm -hmm. This could be, um, uh, you know, th this could be as ugly. This could continue to get uglier and uglier, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it could. And I, in fairness, I would say that if we could sort of put a ranking on the most damning or the, the, i would say if you're going to rank these four to one I, I, I would say the least egregious was the hush money and the, the, the mm -hmm. two the new york one the hush money and the tax one they, they were they just felt like second tier the tax one it would be part of the uh, the hush money yeah yeah it's all part of that exactly it's all so the, the new york stuff we'll put that all in one by that was always the the weakest of the four I, I probably would have put the documents one as the second weakest, not because right. it's not egregious, and we're seeing why it's egregious. But it, again, it's harder feels, to understand. It's harder to understand. It's you know, it's easier for Republicans to to disingenuously uh, do a false or a false equivalence and say, "Oh, Biden," you just like throw that shit out there. And I would say, you know, Georgia's probably number two, and January sixth is well, the big three. One. Well, no, because I would say that the worst, I think, is January 6th. I think the second worst is Georgia. Oh, the higher the number, the worse it is. The higher, uh, yes. Okay, so, I got sorry, you. We're, we're a little clarified. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, um, yeah but we I got think, crosswise you know, there. But yeah, but <laughs> Georgia. Georgia is easy to understand, I it's think. It's very easy to understand, and it's on tape. Like, those are the two, right? But, but also, January 6th is pretty easy to understand because there's so much video of Trump speaking that day. It's the easiest to understand. It's the easiest, yeah. It looks like Meadows is cooperating. I mean, there's a lot. It's also people getting very, very badly hurt and killed. And Correct. it's also during three hours of that, he refuses to call them off. Correct. I don't know what you do with that. Because because he could have like saying like, I wanted to go over there mm -hmm. and I wanted to go over with them not to beat up. I Would I beat up? I'm a 70 you know, five-year-old man at the time, I'm not going to go beat <laughs> yeah. up cops. I'm just going to leave them there and say, right. These people are for me. Let's interrupt this while we settle this. Right. And that's right. the strength of this. I had no intention of these people coming and beating people up. I didn't know about the proud boys. I didn't know about yep. seditious conspiracy. I didn't know any about that. But then when there's three hours 
of people clubbing police with mm-hmm. hockey sticks and flag stabbing them with flagpoles that have been sharpened yeah. and uh, bear, bear spray and yeah. and people are going like uh dad yeah <laughs> and, and, and it's no like, it's so it, yeah and also by the way the senators in their own work i mean you know people obviously people in that building were threatened some were deep were extremely hurt and and they're probably more pissed off about the election than you are correct yeah exactly that's what he, he I said mean, he, he that's what he said i mean but seriously upset, though I mean, upset he, it is a conspiracy to overthrow the results of an election and and he clearly i mean from everything i've seen and what the january 6th commission uncovered is you know he was you know at best complicit in it, at you know, at worst um, just orchestrating it. And that just seems like the essence of, you know, something you ought to get thrown in jail over. <laughs> How's that for a legal term? So uh, do you have any idea of the timeline of this? I, I understand that um, uh, they can try to speed it up. This one this mm-hmm. wasn't, isn't going to be like New York. Right. And the fact that it's in Florida. Yeah. I think everybody's kind of happy about that because it was in dc every they'd be screaming it's in dc which is 97 yeah. percent democrat boy oh boy um i i just i want to see the curve on this i want to see yeah. does he just go up and up and up in the republican primaries and uh i mean does nothing affect him i asked frank four i i i did one of these with him last week i think we're going to play mm-hmm. next week on on ukraine but I said, how many mm-hmm. of these indictments will it take for it to hurt Trump? And he said, infinity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, probably. Look, there, he's, he's got a rea- reality distortion field that he's working with. I mean, I, look, I think Jack Smith is, is good. He's a good foil. He seems like. Doesn't he look he's terrific. like you yeah. wouldn't want to go up against Jack Smith? You don't want to mess with Jack you see that Smith. Video of, you saw that video of him walking yeah. down, walking toward the White House. Yeah. And just the way he didn't answer those guys. Not only that, I saw that. And I, I felt I checked my own garage to see if I had any classified documents. <laughs> I mean, there's no reason I would. Did but you? I, was, I was that intimidated. Turns out I did not. See, here's what I think. This is what's frustrating to me because, yes, he has like there, there will be infinity. He has there, there will be an inf- infinite amount of patience afforded to him by some MAGA loyalists and so forth. But what I understand, and this is why I was sort of encouraged by Christie's performance the other day, is why certain people don't just sort of taunt him with it, saying, "Look, Mr. President." you talk endlessly. How come you never just go under oath? If you've done nothing wrong, you've never gone under oath. I mean, I guess you went under oath that one time. I think he has in depositions. He has, you've done some depositions, but look, why don't you just like go and raise your hand and like, tell us what happened. See, see how you see, you know, why don't you just settle this once and for all? And of course you can't. I mean, but like go right at his manhood, which is kind of like, is a vulnerable, not even manhood. It's just like, look, the honorable thing here is to defend yourself not to like do this completely facocta stuff on truth social that you do and you know these interviews but but just like you know answer simple questions it shouldn't be that complicated sir and then he'd say oh yeah you're all out to get me and it's unfair and all that stuff but i don't know i mean why can't you just sort of why i I would just it would be nice if people just sort of asked very simple questions of him publicly that sounds like the beginning of Christie's, but his tone will get very, very pro- – well, he was a prosecutor, and will get very prosecutorial, and it'll be fun. That'll be the fun thing to watch. It, it will be a fun thing to watch. I mean, I, I suspect they'll do everything possible to avoid getting Trump on a stage with him. You know, all, all Christie needs is just like, what, 5% to get on a stage or something or less. No, it's 1% in three states or something like that. Yeah, I mean, and and a certain amount of donations, certain um, amount of donations, which I assume he'll get probably from many Democrats and independents, but he'll get them. And he'll also um, he'll get a lot of press coverage. There's no question. Um, you know, the press loves, you know, that take because no one else does it. 
and he'll give them what they want. And and look, I he won't win, but I, I I just don't understand why more people aren't emulating him. And and look, I don't think Tim Scott has it in him. I don't think Nikki Haley has it in her. I think well, Nikki Haley, I can guarantee you will not attack him because I think she is eyeing vice president. He, she's yeah. Well, that's not going to happen. I mean, but sure. Well, but she thinks it might be. I would think maybe. I wonder. I wonder if she would actually do that. Can you imagine? I guess they probably all would, right? Including Christy. <laughs> I mean, but um, Chris, look. Uh, you know, I've heard everything you say. Look, how about you want to be? You want to be the vice president? You can be the vice president. Really? <laughs> yeah. Probably. But how about that that twenty minute screaming match we had? Eh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah the last debate, it it smells like politics. It, okay, so who inherits this if it if if it continues to go south? I mean, in other words, he, he's got these indictments, but they turn out to be really, you know, he gets convicted. I'm not sure when this trial is, mm-hmm. but also you get Georgia and you get January six. Yep, and. Is there a path here for anybody but Trump? I mean, can they sour on Trump? And again, I think I'm talking on, only about 7% of Republicans or so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. who are really just not in the MAGA sympathizer area. Right. Because the others have gone to be independents. I think, I think. Yeah, although, you know, DeSantis has like 20% in, in some polls. I mean, it depends on the state, but. He he could conceivably it one one caveat being he has to become a lot better. <laughs> I mean he his he's he's really I think he's off to a terrible start. But you know he he does seem to have a base of people that that want to really like him either because they would they want to move on from Trump. They want to hang on to power. They want to hang on to power, and they think Trump is a loser. Yeah, and they they think that he's a loser, but they also you know DeSantis. Can sort of, but this is money people. I think we're talking about money, money people. people. Yeah, although he, you know, he actually does have poll numbers. twenty percent. He has like yeah, twenty percent. Not insignificant, especially you know. Again, it's not as good as it was, but except the pattern hasn't been positive. you know thirty. Uh, then he makes a mistake and, and it's twenty where he can yeah. bounce back. It's been thirty, twenty nine. Yeah. 28. <laughs> 27. Yeah, no, it, it, it's, <laughs> you know, it's it is true. I, I, I think, you know, Chris Sununu, the governor of New Hampshire, said this week that he's not getting in the race. And, and the reason he said he's not getting in the race is that you he, know, doesn't he doesn't want to divide up the anti Trump. He, he doesn't want to make it harder. Just get more anti Trump vote to split. And he doesn't want to get in the way of that, which is probably a lie. But it's probably I mean, it makes sense if you want to be strategic and you genuinely don't want Donald Trump to be the nominee. Also, it's a pain in the ass to run for president. It, totally. Also, yeah, the absolutely. chances of winning the nomination are mm-hmm. very low because, again, as I keep saying, the, the MAGA part, part of the party is like 60% of the party. No, no doubt. Rest of the party, most of them are MAGA sympathizers in some way. Yeah. I mean, if Nikki Haley and Mike Pence and all, all of them wanted to move on from Trump and they were sincere about looks like yeah let's unite behind one person you get the sense it would not be ron DeSantis because they all seem to hate him also yes there, there's nothing he's done to win anybody's affection certainly. no the, everyone i mean his other republican governors who, who were on the rga with him and who served with him and people who served in congress with him um th- there's not a great collection of stories about him being a mensch as uh, as our people say he, he is uh i mean again people I think people maybe overstate the, oh, he's not, he's, you know, he's not someone you want to get a beer with and all that stuff. So two, uh, two members of the legal team of the uh, Trump legal team mm-hmm. resigned today. Yeah. One is named Trusty. <laughs> and yeah. I just wonder if that was his birth name or as a lawyer, just when he, he joined the bar, if he changed his name to Trusty, but he, he they had been, they had been uh, working for, uh, for Trump and uh, have resigned. He seems to have a thin team. He he seems to have a thin team, and and Trump apparently is going to tr- uh, replace the guy named Trusty with a guy named um, Jim Unreliable. <laughs> I wanted... No, that's a dumb dad joke. So here's my uh, you know uh, here here's the thing again. It's just absolute fear. Uh, the Mueller case. You know, I read the Mueller report. 
And boy, oh boy, it's pretty clear there was coordination between the Trump campaign and and the Russians. But Barr just keeps going. There's no collusion. And then he says there's no coordination. And there was. Yep. So he just really lied about that. And that and that made a big difference. And Mueller, when he testified, he wasn't the Bob Mueller that we all knew from uh, before, right? Yep. Um, whatever happened to him had happened. Right. So that's what I worry about. I worry about that somehow mm -hmm. in the court of public opinion, he's going to survive this, make it to the nomination. <laughs> Everyone's saying ankle bracelet. Is that is that could happen soon enough? Ankle bracelet next um, what August? I don't know, man. You need a pretty quick trial. We need a trial, a conviction, and then you need like yeah. uh, they're going to appeal sentence. There'll be an appeal. I mean, you know, and you're certainly well into election season at the earliest. So can you go to prison uh, while you're in a, in appeal? Of course you can. Of course you can. Of course you can. <laughs> Especially if you're I, dangerous. I guess so, but in a white collar case. Although, you know, maybe if it involves conspiracy and espionage and like all that. Well, mess. you know, a couple of weeks ago, we did this thing on QAnon. Mm -hmm. I, I was stunned by how easily QAnon followers would be fooled. Mm -hmm. You know, something wouldn't happen like Hillary wouldn't go to prison. Mm -hmm. But then it was like, well, then Q would just tell them, no, no, no. Hillary is in prison. She wears an ankle bracelet uh -huh. under mm -hmm. her pantsuit. Yeah. And there was enough flair to the pantsuit for people to believe that because they wanted to believe she was she is in prison for uh, something about classified documents. <laughs> the email. Yeah, yeah, something about that. Oh, yeah. So, so no Republicans are. Is, is McConnell at any point going to go like, well? Um, we have to see how the trial goes. Or, I mean, is he going to do something? Is he going to say imagine. something somewhat? Neutral. I mean, that's what um, that's who said we have to see. Oh, I guess Christie said we'll have to see how the trial goes. I haven't seen all the evidence. And he's running for the job of that he had with Mark with Marco Rubio. He's running for two yeah. two campaigns in a row in which right. there was a race. He knocked the guy out. He's look. He's he wants to be uh, you know the killer. The killer. Although although Rubio was then the runner up or the second or third. I mean, you know he wasn't. The, uh, if the if the model were to persist, I mean, Christie would take out DeSantis on the debate stage, and ultimately Trump would be helped again. Yeah, oh, and 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 Christie would take Veep. That's it, that's he what would take Veep, and then yeah, and then Trump would hug him in the green room, and then call him the day he drops out, and tell him he loves him again, and then all of a sudden, you know, Christie's endorsing him the next day. But Christie and Gingrich were the runners up for Veep uh, last time, so. You know, if Gingrich wants to get in, you know, or he doesn't have to get in, but maybe he'll be considered this time. So let, let me let me go to a whole different thing. Let me go to a whole different area on this crime, on this uh, uh, alleged, alleged mm -hmm. crime, this charge crime. Alleged, yeah. Why did Trump do this? I mean, other than sort of I wanted to show this stuff off. Mm -hmm. um, I, he's crazy. I think yeah. I can do anything. <laughs> I mean, there's there's that, which is, I guess, enough. Yeah. But Jared's uh, fund gets two mm -hmm. billion dollars from Saudi yeah. Arabia. Yeah. Okay. And some of this stuff is like, oh, Iran's nuclear uh, capabilities. Right. Um, well, that might be something that uh, Saudi Arabia would like to see. You would think, right? And and maybe uh, you know may, maybe Jared gets uh, another extra billion thrown in there if if there, he can like sort of sweeten it with some secrets. Or as I like to say, an extra two billion. <laughs> I mean, maybe <laughs> maybe yeah. it was just two billion. You know, what yeah. I mean, like for for yeah. that it, exactly. No, I mean that was actually it, Christie actually mentioned the Saudi Kushner connection the other day, which I thought was interesting. And he said, you know, he made his funds go up like two billion dollars. And by the way. It's not like he's a genius investor. Like that was that was I'm paraphrasing, but that's basically what Christie said, which I thought was Oh, that's good. See that's really that's funny. what you're gonna get with Christie. You're gonna get an entertaining guy. Yeah, that's the kind of thing that he said that and I was like, Oh, I'm glad he's in. But um yeah, I mean if Smith has proof of that, I mean of like, you know, some kind of actual giving of these things to to, you know, third parties, I mean, 
it it uh, it sounds really really bad. Trump likes money. He does. Did like you know money. that? He seems to need money. Um, but look, he he doesn't like to be told what to do. He he's you know he, he thinks he likes to show it off. You're, you're, are you trying to give him more credit? Than um, I am. <laughs> I mean, no, is, that, is that what no, you're doing I'm right not. now? I'm no, I'm not. I, I, you know what, Al? I haven't seen the evidence. Oh, listen, you. If any of this, um, any of these documents turn up at the royal palace in like Riyadh or something like that, that why would be, they though? I don't know. I, you know, um, but actually, wouldn't it be funny if some of these these uh, documents turned up in some of these. Uh, Saudi uh, golfer garages, like uh, what's like uh, Phil Mickelson? What if he had, like, <laughs> oh, stuff? you mean now that they have yeah, the now that they've merged? Yeah, we could see there's a connection between all the golfers, and then he the seems to be wiping the ball with some kind of document. <laughs> yeah, it seems to be written in Iranian, <laughs> you know, Arabic or some. But but you know, Trump want he loves these Saudi golf you know thing. He wants their tournaments and all that stuff. Um, but no, I, I, I haven't, we haven't seen proof that they have actually been, um, d- diverted to some third party and that he was trying to enrich himself because, uh, that would be even worse. I know, but I'm, I, I think that if he did that, there'd yeah. be very, it'd be very hard to find out because, um, <laughs> yeah. and, and obviously that wouldn't be part of the case. And there are a lot of people talking. There are a lot. I mean, like, look, that's what gives me some hope here. I mean, Meadows actually seems like he probably has been talking a lot to Smith around these documents, but he obviously is going to be be in a position to be quite a witness, you know, if January 6th becomes, um, you know, something he's indicted over. So I don't know. I've heard I've heard both sides of that, that he is cooperating, that he isn't cooperating. Uh, sounds like he is. But, you know, I hope and, he cooperates. Know, Boy, I hope he Pence. cooperates up the wazoo. You know, maybe Pence, but maybe like the charitable, like sort of read on Pence's conduct as he figures he gave up so much stuff when he was under oath. You know, he doesn't need to like, I mean, he realizes that anything he says publicly isn't going to, uh, couldn't hurt him possibly any more than what he's already given up privately. What could he give up under oath? Well, I, uh, plenty, plenty, plenty. But we've yeah. already know that he called him a pussy. Yeah. Which is very hurtful. Yeah. Okay, well, let's uh, let's keep abreast of this, as we say, and we'll see you soon, I hope, here on the Al Franken Podcast. Sounds great. Thanks for having me, Al. Well, I, I hope you enjoyed uh, listening. That beautiful music is by Leo Kotke, the great Leo Kotke. I want to thank Peter Ogburn for producing this podcast. We'll talk again next week. Mm-hmm.